I sort of like quote unquote became famous on the scene because I was the first guy that did Pong with GPT-4 and O1 came and I was like, wow, this is actually kind of hard to show what the cable was. I'm getting to a point where I'm actually making apps with it to show what it's capable of. This is Pietro. He's the guy who can build anything with AI from games to apps to entire startups. In this podcast, we talk about the new O1 model from OpenAI. And later in the video, Pietro shows how he's using O1 as his programming agent. This is the David Andre podcast. Enjoy. Last week, OpenAI released O1, which is the first big model since GPT-4. What are your thoughts on O1? I'm actually pretty excited because it brings me back to the GPT-3 time where, you know, nobody knew what this thing was because, you know, unlike any other model that you came before, O1 is part of what you can call reasoning LLMs, uh, which is basically LLMs with an internal chain of thoughts. But a lot of LLM performs really well if you have chain of thoughts. For example, yeah. cloud is amazing at this. And, you know, but the difference with O1 is that it's actually trained on chain of thoughts. So the model of understand chain of thoughts are, are internally compared to, you know, just telling you what to do. And the other thing is because he understands chain of thoughts, he's actually able to even go back to his mistake, right? So sometimes you may, you may see when you ask for a request and say, oh, you know, I'm doing this and now I'm doing this. And then he might say, oh, actually, you know, this might be a better approach. And so yeah. that's just something that it wasn't possible with quote unquote regular LLM. And so pretty exciting. And then to your point, you know, I think like people were dubbing in open AI. I think people in the space that like, you know, like it's it's very easy to dub open AI because you know they didn't release you know the audio fiasco and like a bunch of other things. But this is a really good model and like it's a little hard to use, but it's so far it's a it's a pretty good model. Yeah. And I think this is, you know, as you said, this is the era of LLMs thinking for, you know, now we see seconds or like minutes, then it's gonna be hours, mm -hmm. weeks maybe even months, depending on the complexity of the task, right? Like if you have some advanced research project, like imagine like O1 powered by perplexity researching for a week straight, like what could that, you know, look like? That would be super huge. Yeah, and actually I've, I've been thinking a lot about this because I was like that, it's another like trillion company about to happen. What's interesting about that is that for, 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 for a while we fought LLM plateau, right? And we fought that, uh, you know, NVIDIA was going to go down and all the GPU providers were going to go down because training is getting cheap. So basically now we're at a point where like training is really cheap or it's getting really cheap. And now uh, the actual compute money is moving towards inference, yeah. right? And so as you said, you know, you, you might have a cancer research facility or mm -hmm. any sort of pharmacy facility and you might spend $10 million on running this question for, you know, six months, eight months. I mean, it's pretty exciting because in a way, it's funny, like when you think about the start of computers, right? And you go back like 50, 60 years ago, you have these like huge machines, right? That took like the entire space. And that's kind of what people did. They ask a question and they wait long, long hours to get an answer. But that's because, you know, the model has to go to the algorithm, like punching all those cards and calculating the bits and like all this stuff. And we're kind of like getting back to that time, uh, but with intelligence. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's very exciting. And I think we can probably solve, you know, like a lot. It, 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 there's a lot of good positive stuff that are going to come out of there. Of course, it's very expensive, but I think we're going to figure it out as that as well. That brings up like an interesting thought experiment, like which problems are not worth solving right now, where it's just like better to pour yeah. resources into the AI and say like, let AI solve cancer or Alzheimer's or stuff like that. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, it's funny you say that because I actually tweeted the other day, I was like, the... Uh, smarter the LL, those models get, the better those models get, the harder is to show what they're capable of. Yeah, that's right? true. Like, you know, you, there's only a certain amount of snake game you can yeah. make and, and pong game. It's funny because, like, to everybody, what I would say is, like, just use cloud for everything. And then if you're working on a research that's, like, really intense or some mathematical problem or, you know, medical problem, maybe use, uh, you know, a one preview for planning and still use cloud, you know, to kind of like, you know, navigate the main, the, the main task. But yeah, it's getting harder to show what they're capable of, basically. I mean, that was actually my next question, like for which type of tasks you prefer using O1 and which, you know, use Claude or GPT-40. By the way, I'm running a special September only offer. If you join before the end of the month, you'll get a personalized analysis of your career and job and whether it's at risk of being replaced by AI and how you can upskill yourself. So if you want access to the smartest people at the cutting edge of AI, exclusive trainings and workshops on how to make money with AI, how to build AI agents, 
and myself, make sure to join the new society because AI waits for no one. So click the link below and join today. And for me, like I agree, I think 90%, maybe 95% of prompts should be going to those standard LLMs because most prompts don't require, you know, advanced reasoning process. But those tasks that are more complex, that, you know, you're, you need to give a lot more context, a lot more instructions, O1 or O1 mini even, perform much better? That's a great question. So what I realize is that what I'm oh, actually what I'm liking is using I use all of this stuff for coding like that coding is always going to be my main yeah. my main uh, use here. I use O1 for planning and then I, I like cloud code or O1 for planning and then O1 coding. And actually I have a few examples of this so I can show you like how I do that. And what I realize is that you know if you just ask O1 to code something one is not as creative as Claude to profess on it. So it's not going to able, for example, I'll yeah. tell you a very simple example. One, one demo that I like to ask every LLM is to create a God simulation. And so what basically it does, it's a game where you put little emojis and then basically you have control like earthquakes and, and hurricane and, and water. And so you basically have like all this control over the weather, right? And it's like a little simulation where you see all the emoji moving and you can see the population increasing and decreasing based on, on the stuff that you selected. And if you ask Claude to do that, as a, as a web app, it right away uses emoji, uh, right away use color. Uh, even if you didn't ask to use emoji, for example, for like, you know, meteorite, it will actually use that. So cloud is just like able to have this sort of like, you know, quote unquote creativity of taking its knowledge and, and building stuff with code. O1 is very strict, right? It will do the skeleton of, yeah. of the app. Well, I'm talking about O1 meaning. We do like the skeleton of the app and never really get that creative. The other thing I noticed with coding is that, for example, one of the things I do a lot is like I take an API, right? It's like, okay, this is the, I don't know, how to use OpenAI API for function calling. And then I will put it into Claude and say, hey, you know, I need to build something with this. Claude does that like 99.9% .9 of the time. What I realize is the all one series model, they are very opinionated. So mm. even if you give them, hey, this is how you do the OpenAI, they're like, no, 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 no. This is how you do the open AI call. And their knowledge ends at uh, September 20, 2021. And so one problem that allows you, it will always pull up the old way yeah. of doing the open AI uh, on competition, which doesn't work anymore, right? Because they updated the API like a long time ago. And so those are the stuff. And so like, you know, cloud still does these things better, but I like using this idea of like planning and coding uh, that, you know, it does, it does really well. Oh, and also the other thing I think it's important for people to know that I don't know why OpenAI didn't make this very clear. O1 is better than O1 Preview. And this because O1 Preview is a checkpoint yeah. of the larger O1 that is coming. But O1 Mini is the big one just pruned to be more focused on coding and, and STEM task. But it's just confusing. I like, guess the name is like, oh, Mini, so this is smaller. No, it's, it's a better model. It's actually like on some of the benchmarks, as you said, O1 Mini performs better at programming and math specifically than O1 Preview. I feel like this could be thinking in terms of the future, like where it will be used, right? Like specifically inside of Cursor, people will be probably using O1 Mini a lot more than O1 full version when it comes out because it will be expensive. The limits will be low, stuff like that. So. You know, maybe that's like open AI planning for the future. Same with like GPT or O mini was much more used for like AI agents because it's a lot of, you know, super cheap model, super effective while still getting like 85% of the performance. Maybe that is like planning to the future for open AI. Totally. And, and, and you know, it's interesting. I'm starting to see a really interesting pattern emerging where we're going to start using those model most like people. And, and what I mean by that, we're going to start seeing like a much more sort of like differentiation in the usage of this model. Yeah. Like for example, you know, let's pretend, you know, Google Gemini becomes really, really good at uh, creative writing, right? Because it's already pretty good, right? And maybe, you know, the future is going to be like, oh, I'm going to use Gemini for uh, writing something creative. I'm going to use Claude for chemistry. I'm making this up. And, you know, I will use uh, O1 for coding, right? And so I think like, as we start like evolving, we're gonna start seeing this this very interesting like almost like special specialization of this LLM. And I think what you say, uh, you know, using O one meaning for coding and maybe O one preview for like you know medical research or research. Yeah. I think that's gonna be like we're gonna start seeing this trend becoming stronger and stronger because it's it seems like it's really hard to train a model to do everything well. 
Yeah. It's very, very hard. You see, we don't want like it does coding really well, but it's not great other stuff. I absolutely agree. I think there'll be many models, each one uh, good and different things. And that's why I think like people really need to go into the trenches and play around with all the models for their own use cases and not just like watch videos, right? Because if they're like getting lost right now, imagine in two years when, you know, there's a lot more players, all the companies have different models at the different checkpoints. Maybe the same model at the different checkpoint is better at some things, right? We've seen that before. I think it'll be true again. So, uh, you know, that's why like really going and t testing everything themselves is really key. And like, that's why I'm a huge believer in, you know, just not not like only using ChatGPT. Like, you know, Claude is a huge player. Mistral is a huge player. As you said, Gemini is like amazing, big context windows, right? So all these companies yeah. have different benefits and different advantages. Like, okay, so specifically for O1, I've seen you made a post about prompt engineering being different, right? How does it change between standard models and for O1 reasoning models? Yeah, so one thing I noticed is that, you know, O1 has this like cognition uh, process, right? Like it, yeah. it thinks about stuff. But sometimes, you know, I I would look at the the things that he's thinking, and I'm like, I I wouldn't have done that, right? Like I like why are you going to this direction, um, or like you know why are you going this large? Like why don't you start stay more focused, or like why you stay so focused? Why don't you go a little larger, right? And so I think like I, I one thing that I, I can summarize well is like in the past it was about stealing results, right? Because it was all this like sort of like. Um, stochastic feature of like, you know, like, yeah, like yeah. all this, like, so, but now it's like, it's about still thinking. Right. And so I think that's why I was trying to tell people like, you know, you can actually control the thinking better because in the past you will say to, to Jupiter 4 or, or uh, cloud, think step by step, do this, do that, do this. But it, even if it looks like he's doing, he's actually not doing it. Right. But now you're actually in, in the first time you actually can control that, that thinking, right. You can actually shape how, the machine is thinking. And so that's what I think was important for people to know. The other thing I noticed is that if you ask for uh, counterpoints, right? Like don't only ask for, uh, you know, like what are the advantage of drinking uh, Gatorade Zero uh, over, you know, it's, and don't, don't just ask that. Then I also ask what is, what is better than regular Gatorade, right? Yeah. Um, and it would just give you a better response because it, it basically, it, 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 in, a, in a funny way, it's a lot like a human, right? Like, like if, I, if I go to somebody in the street and I just say like, hey, why should I buy a PlayStation 5? You'll be like, I don't know, you know, what, what question is that? But like, it was like, I was like, oh, you know what? Like, why should I buy a PlayStation 5 over Nintendo Switch? And he might say, no, oh, you know, Nintendo Switch is, is cool, but it's an old console. The, the graphic is not that great. And so it's really like, you know, shaping the, the thinking of, of the machine. And, 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 and the other thing that I noticed is like, it does really well too when you give hypothetical scenarios. Mm. Uh, so it's like, you know, oh, I want to build a business dashboard for uh, my company versus I have five users that are going to use this app this way. Uh, what is the design? What is the thing going to look like? Just push the model to really like uh, activate those logic part of its brain. Prompting is so hard. Like it's, it's not easy. And you would have thought that the better the model will get, the easier the prompt becomes. It's actually getting harder because now you can really get the power of those things. And to your point, you know, you need to start absorb and, and study right now so then you know once the model get even better you can get more out of it basically yeah for sure and i feel like you know people that have been in the field for six months 12 months 18 months or even longer they take it for granted the pain of going from zero to you know knowing the basics of prompt engineering as you said it's different for images videos llms and now for reasoning models it's like completely different but we already have the fundamentals of you know doing this for yeah. like two years since ChatGPT came out at least right so the average person still doesn't know anything about prompt engineering and they, from my experience, they interact with AI models like Google. They just like type in a prompt, the same way yeah. did Google, like, like food, like food near me or, you know, whatever. Just like super bad prompts that result in like bad results. And I think for the first time we see O1 is the first model that can actually dig itself out of the uh, incorrect path, right? Because in the past, the models like do everything like zero shot the first attempt. So if it starts generating token in a certain way that is not the right, you're basically screwed for that prompt, right? And I think O1, since it does the reasoning process, it can solve some of this. But as you said, 
in terms of like the first prompt is much more important for previous models you could do a prompt then you would do another one and you know you would build on top of the chat but it, with o1 from my experience ve again very limited it's only been out for like a week and a half but like the amount of context you provide at the start is really key because if i give it only like one to two sentences it from my experience it only thinks for like five seconds at most and gives a pretty mediocre response but if the more details i give it assuming they're actually relevant right the longer it thinks and then the better the response is so really like spending time on the first prompt which again beginners cannot do because they don't know what to say but like trying to give it all the relevant context you have results in better responses totally and, and i think like you are like uh, like a very important problem which is like you know your question now has so much more weight and uh, yeah it's just important to understand like the power or like what you give to this uh machines basically yeah like one practical application i think is going to be huge is that no like anybody i think this is the first time where truly non-programmers can complete small and medium-sized freelance projects like people can go right now to upwork and fiverr and just offer services for small projects right and use o1 to do them because again most people still aren't using these tools they don't even know they exist and those that do know they exist aren't you know aren't aware of the power that they have so i feel like anybody can really make most small and medium-sized projects with o1 because the, the outputs are so long and so thorough so as long as like you're able to install programs and follow instructions I mean, that's all you really need to build stuff right now. And uh, going back to, you know, like the programmer and the, the, the question that you ask, O1 has an output, a max output of 65,000 token. That is so much token. And O1 preview is half of that, like 32 to something. That's why it's important to ask a good question because you might find yourself getting a novel written for you in one shot. Yeah, and and I don't think people are like are like really understanding this, and and and, and like to your example, yeah, you can take an entire request from uh, Upwork or Fiverr or whatever it is, and 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 throw it into it, and it might give you you know like twenty five files, which is which is why I've been really enjoying this like combination of planning and execution, uh, because then I get the most out of the the execution part because the, you know the the planning is like. It's like so good. So what's the next step for you personally? Is it to focus on EverArt and do these cool coding projects on the side? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's funny because a lot of those projects, they actually inform stuff that then get end up building in EverArt. So for instance, you know, EverArt, you know, we have training platform for image models. Right? So yeah. now I'm proud to say, I think we have the best technology for, you know, you train on a cup or whatever, and, you know, we could just create that object in any possible scenario. And we just add videos. You have to see this. It's crazy. We have like high quality video now on Everheart. So like from any image you upload or image you create, you can basically just create like, you know, high quality video. Yeah, I think this is going to be like revolutionary in advertising. Because like think oh, of yes. how expensive it is to hire photographers, studios, traveling, models. You know, it's insane. Now oh, everybody can just do it with one model. And, and also this is really for companies that are like, you know, up to one to five million dollars in revenue. Because like, you know, the the big company in the world, like the Apple, the Nike, they're going to do it like, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. But so for example, this is a model trained on Casamigo, like the tequila bottle. And I look at so that. So is this Flux One? This is a Flux One, yes, with our in-house pipeline. That, okay. But, you know, if you look at the training data, this will go into the model. So it all speaks to Casamigos, right? So like 20 high quality images. Yeah, 10, 15, 20 high quality images. And then I can say something like, uh, you know, a bear holding a bottle and it would be that, right? Or I can say, you know, I mean, like, the text was really good. That's impressive. Exactly. It's crazy. Like, look at this, a bottle in a ice cave. And so what's interesting about EverArt, it's like, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say like a bottle of Casamigos when the text is like this and the lighting is like this because the model has learned so much about the imaging part and that object that you can be very uh, simple in the description. And so look at this. This is a beautiful picture of a Casamigo bottle in the ice cave. I mean, it, dude, it is crazy. I mean, like, what would it that take to create that in real life, right? Let's say we had the idea right now, like we need to go to yeah. <laughs> find an iceberg or whatever, fly a photographer out there. It's just like insane, man. Like it's it's crazy. I can say like a polar bear holding a bottle in Alaska. I don't know. <laughs> and then we also have feature like give me ideas, which actually uh, improve your prompt, right? Which is really cool. So this gives you like five going back to the idea that it's really hard to prompt, right? And which LLM is that? Uh, this is all this is Gemini. Okay. Um, dude, how crazy is this? And so now, right? So 
<laughs> this is amazing. So now I have this, right? And I can turn into a video. So I'm gonna say generate a video, and this is gonna be, oh, I love this one too. I'm gonna turn this one to a video too. If you're serious about AI, then make sure to join the new society. In the site, you will learn how to build AI agents and how to make money with AI. So click the link below and join today. I mean, people underestimate the power of this because like you can create stuff that's create. impossible to create with photos and that's gonna grab the attention of people scrolling on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, 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 it's, it's exactly. So this is what my clients say. It's like, I'm doing a photo shoot. I'm doing a safari team photo shoot. He's like, you know how much it will cost me to put that jacket and go and do a, a safari for the shoot like under a thousand dollars now it just trains on a jacket and then it puts the the model in a safari scenario in a jacket i mean it's it's just crazy and i mean this is an amazing and it's like casamigo tequila like i mean is the bottle wait so right are you doing something extra with the text or is that flux default no i'm doing something crazy to get okay so that's right. proprietary that's, secret info okay it's proprietary yeah, yeah, but it, it is based on Flux. I mean, it's it's it's, it's using Flux as a base model, and and then we just put like all our um, tech on top of it. But we also just launched the uh, Ohm, which is like you know because we have so many different functionality, we want to show people you know like. But we to need to use, do the entire uh, video on Everard. I feel like we haven't done Everard justice. I know it's so good, dude. Uh, look at this. Like that's just crazy. And which uh, video model is that? So this is like a, a mix of like different stuff. So like, like runway, dude, this, yeah, it's basically a mix. Yeah, I can can't really tell you, but it's a mix. Okay. For different I, I don't want to like leak stuff that's private, so <laughs> I apologize for asking like this. No, 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 it's a total fair question. It's just a mix of different stuff. But okay, that's a that's crazy, no? <laughs> and it's only oh gonna get God, better. Dude. Like you know, imagine six months, twelve months, like it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. Yeah, but yeah, Everart is amazing. I really recommend checking it out. You can train anything. You can train on uh aesthetic so style object piece of clothing a bottle a brand anything face for people in text so you can upload text style like fonts mm -hmm. like like it's different fonts that you like logos and stuff and then you can just type and you get that style which is really, really cool so how, um, how huge was like flux for ever art you know it's interesting so i've been doing this so ever art is about to hit 11 months this month. So nice. it's not even been a year. But I was super early on this. Like I was truly like like the first company doing fine tuning a scale. And of course we were using XDXL as a as a base. Yeah. And we were getting good results, especially with style. Style, quote unquote, was solved, but objects very complicated. But you know, we still we still keep our heads down and work and really understand training fine tuning what moves the needle what doesn't move the needles when flux came to the market we were ready to capitalize mm. on the quality we knew everything about fine tuning because you know like all the things we, we knew about fine tuning still apply to flux that was yeah. the best part and and i think you know we talked about this in an early podcast with you when we were saying you know build for intelligence where just yeah. build the best tool learn how to use it. So then when a better model comes in, you can just swap it. And so Flux was a major thing for us because now the quality is just like super impressive as you saw. And what's funny is now there's like 10 companies that are trying to do whatever Art is doing because yeah, the tech yeah. is good now, right? But they all do it in different ways. And I, I'm not trying to shit on competition because I think competition is good, but we've been doing this for so long. And you know we have, we have things like, you know, the data library, like which is basically like a Dropbox inside of this thing that you can just drop assets. And the UI on, is so nice. Right? It's so nice. Like we have data library, we have like model, uh, we have uh, we have API for bigger client, we have like Teams accounts. So yeah, it's it's super super cool. Okay, so when it came out, you went to work right away as always and built a project based on it called O1 Engineer. Can you show us how that works and what is the like? What's the idea behind it? I'm going to show you um, this thing. It's actually pretty cool. One thing that's interesting about O1, it doesn't support a system prompt. Yeah. And it doesn't support a uh, function calling. So you're like, oh, damn. Like the two most important thing <laughs> when like you want to build like some sort of like application, right? But what's cool is that you can fake this stuff, right? And I'll show you how I fake them and how I create it. Um, or one engineer. So first of all, it behaves like, you know, if you just chat, it behaves as a regular thing. So if I say hello, of course, this is a waste, right? But it will think and it will say, hey, 
hello, how are you today? And so I can see what I pointed to the prompt. So it was like 410 token. What was the uh, the one that he put out as response? And then his reasoning token, 320. And then of course the total, and then the amount of money that it, it cost me, right? So but this is then, including your system prompt that you have written. Yes, which is basically like, and I, I will go you, I will go through the details. Okay, okay. Strange. Strange. So, but now I can say like, you know, uh, code uh, game, I'm just saying a game, a game on Snake in uh, Python file, right? So it's gonna do that. Basically, what's gonna do? It's gonna fake function calling it. How do I fake function calling it? If you ask for a code question, it only returns JSON file, right? Yeah. Then I parse the JSON file, and you can see created Snake BI. Yeah. It made Snake in the console. Oh, in the Wait, terminal. I had never, I had never seen this in my life. <laughs> So it didn't use pgame. It made snake in the console, and I'm grabbing the 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 symbol. By character. But let's make it a little more interesting. So yeah. we have basically uh, a, a pre prompt which says, you know, when asking to provide code files, just do this. Provide a JSON file, and this is gonna be the structure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, why, if I say, you know, create a folder with like three text files about history. I don't know. So what you should do, basically, is you should just create just one JSON file and call, you know, history folder, whatever it's going to call. Okay, so now it worked, right? So it created an history folder, right? And inside of this history folder, they created three files, ancient history, middle ages, and modern history. So now what it gets interesting, what I realized was like, wait, wait a second, this is way more powerful if I actually do some planning first, right? And so what I'm going to do now, if you type planning, what's actually happened uh, it sends a different pre-prompt. We are an AI planning assistant. Your task is to create a detailed plan based on a user request. Consider all, all the aspects, blah, blah, blah. Provide a comprehensive strategy for accomplish that goal, basically. So you're asking like not to solve the goal, but to actually plan it, right? Yeah. So now I can say, okay, create a Flask app that shows the weather in like three different locations, I don't know. So now it will create this ultra detailed plan. And then the user can say if you, they want to use that plan or not. And then if you select, if you, if you, if you say, yes, I want to use this plan, it will go into another instance of Omini and Omini will actually create the file. And so look at this. So it, it's, it gives like all these really nice instructions, right? Yeah, this is super and so this is the interesting thing. Huh? Yeah, this is super photo, like very, very long compared to normal LLM output. And so this is going back to what, you, what we were just saying, which was like, you know, you need to give uh, a good extraction to get a good something in return. And so my, my planning extraction is pretty detailed. And so now we get, you know, he's giving us the back end, he's giving the front end, version control, like how to deploy it. He's giving us all this also stuff, like the link for the API, the structure, right? But, you know, the idea here now, it's like, he's taking this file and it's creating them, basically. My observations are like three main things. Number one, you can obviously set the system prompt with this trick that you did. Number two, mm -hmm. you like basically added the function calling by showing it exactly the JSON output. And number three, you don't have to like copy paste it from ChatGPT. You can actually work with it straight inside of Cursor and have it access the files and the code right away. Yes, that's that's uh, that's correct. I actually brought the O1 stuff into Cloud Engineer too. So this is really cool. So this is actually um, cloud engineer using O1, which is pretty crazy. So if you're familiar with cloud engineer, cloud engineer is this, is this like really super powerful uh, click command action where you can just do a lot of this stuff. The way that you know cloud engineer work, you know, if you ask once again this one, you know, if you ask, you know, a web app in one folder called podcast test is a weather app create the CSS, GS, and HTML, and give me the weather for three locations. So this one now, first thing we'll do, because it, this is in function calling with, with cloud, right? So first thing we'll do, it will actually go and create the folder structure, right? Because that's how cloud thinks. It's, it's capable to like, just basically break, like breaking down this, this issue like in multiple, in multiple ways. So, you know, get a product pocket test or so the folder is there. And now it's going to say like, you know, um, I'm, uh, next step is to create files. I can also say, you know, go auto mode. So it's just like, you don't have to like confirm, right? So, and 
the beauty of Cloud Engineer, it actually creates multiple files at the same time, which is what also all one engineer should have done. But because you don't have functional calling, you know, it's like it, it gets a little tricky there with the um yeah, you have to specify uh, it in like the part. Yeah. Yeah. Now the thing is like, okay, you can say, okay, you, this is already does like a pretty good job of like creating file, coding, answering questions, and whatnot. But then I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I also add um the ability planning. to have all one to plan? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I say planning. So this is exactly like what you said. You're using the different models for what they're best at, right? Yes. Then this gets you like the, the the best, I think, the best results. So I'm gonna say, you know, create a web app that allows me to upload audio files and visualize animations in the browser. Let's try that. So now opening up one mini generates a plan. Yeah. And then you can ask Cloud Engineer to execute that plan. So this is the plan that he made. Uh, you say, okay, do all this, create uh, the project overview, the function, blah, blah, blah. And so now I say, okay, do you want Cloud Engineer to do that? And I say, yes, I want. By the way, just for people like to realize, you know, people are so spoiled because just like creating that plan manually would take like at least an entire day, right? And now with LLMs, like <laughs> it's like 30 seconds at most. Dude, look how many how many folders we created. Like yeah. that's just crazy. So it's called Audio Wits app. So we have all those folders. And now I'm gonna say, you know, auto mode. And this might take a while. So oh, also I, I discovered something interesting yesterday that I think maybe we don't know. So if I say I'm gonna continue with the plan, so because I also add shot command now, is creating a React app. So Cloud Engineer understood that in order to execute this correctly, it has to be a React app. So it's going to that folder and it's running the shell command, which is kind of crazy, right? But just for you to know, like, look how crazy, like, you know, I, like I wouldn't be able to plan this this well, right? And this fast. Right? And so this is like kind of like the power of like combining basically a planning in a lamb with something that actually can create code, like, which is pretty cool. I guess to make it faster, I can show you like, you can do like a simpler example where I can say, you know, create a Flask app that allows to upload audio and visualize the animation in the uh, app. Use the best library for it. Okay, cool. So this is where like experience comes in, right? You know which libraries work, which don't. You you know like what mm. how big you, the how complex the project should be because sometimes the model really tries to like flex and just build something super advanced, but then it can easily get out of hand and you, you don't know where an error is. So sometimes it's easier to just build something simple first. Exactly. And so you create all this plan. The one thing because now we have shell command. So I you know I haven't tested this interaction between the two like a lot, but like sometimes because now we have shell command, it might install stuff, right? So that it's like the part that's like still kind of like trying to figure out like maybe, you know, adding an extra thing here where I tell cloud, you know, do not install stuff. This time it's called, oh, this is the one, visualizer, audio visualizer. Okay, that's the one. So this one shouldn't install, you know, anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna say auto mode, continue it with the plan, but never <laughs> use the uh, shell command tool or the execute code one just complete the plan because you know cloud is smart enough to say hey you know i made this flask app you don't have this library install it but for the sake of this demo i'm gonna want to do that because it, yeah you, know, it, you get into some some uh It'll take forever kind of work yeah and so you got a pretty detailed plan like, and and as you can see like you know sometimes you also provide code which is great because it's a great starter for, for cloud, right? Which is way better than what I will do, right? Okay, so he created this file. He created um, the, in the visualizer run. Oh, this is the, this one. So, oh my God, dude, he made all the files. Look at this. How amazing is that? Yeah, entire project. And that's what cloud is better at, right? Like I want to use O1 to create the coding file for this, just use cloud. Right. For people watching, one mini only did the planning and then Claude 3.5 Sona did the coding. Exactly. Also, now he's making the template. This is for uploading, this is for visualization. So if you say 11 labs, labs on, now you should speak like Jarvis. Hello, I'm Claude, an AI assistant specialized in software development yeah. and various tasks. How can I help you today? 
Is there a specific project or coding task you'd like assistance with? Which this is cool because you can also miss voice mode. So if I type voice mode first and I can speak and he answers Jarvis, so I can say like, you know, I need this this Python file and this thing. I think the voice modality will also unlock so much new use cases, right? It's like being in an office and just having a bunch of employees. You're going to have like one on the left, one on the right, you know, one female, one male. And it's just like one is doing always some research. One is sorting your calendar and your t task list and just like, they're, they're working on, on something for like 30 minutes. Then they start speaking like, this is complete. What should I do next? I, I think like this is like a lot closer than people realize. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I, I, as you say, voice really unlocks something else. Cause like at the end of the day, what we're going to see is like what, what really matters with these tools is the Delta between your thoughts and outputs, right? So the, the, yeah. the less amount of time you can spend articulating your thoughts, the better. And so like, I realize if I just speak the problem, and, and it's and also you know English is not my language and so like actually what I realized like the speech uh, recognition is better at picking up my English than my typing it's just better it, you know it makes your thoughts like fly faster basically. One of the last questions I want to ask is for people who want to build their own AI tool or AI software or AI project. What advice do you have for those, especially those who haven't built any software in the past? Yeah, my answer is like always always build the stuff that makes sense for you for example when i did cloud engineer and maestro before that which you know we we even spoke at, at, at your podcast was i really needed this like i was like you know i don't want to go to chat gpt or, or cloud or any of the apps like, because it's just like it, it just takes so long and also this is before cursor composer right so yeah. uh, like this is basically cursor composer in a script right and and so first of all identify what you really want right like i was like i want a tool that i can just type code and give it to me and then um use ai to build it and then scale it and then you know you might get that very interesting intersection of where your needs actually meet other people need and so for instance a couple of weeks ago i spoke at the berkeley uh national laboratory i didn't even announce this online but that's the place where the atomic bomb was first Theorized, right? Like the, the wow. theory of the atomic bomb. So they asked me to give a presentation about cloud engineer because they're using cloud engineering internally for coding and they're nice. seeing like some of the results. And it was awesome. Like I was, I spoke to 10 scientists and I'm like, you know, here I am like quote unquote an expert in this space, but nobody's an expert because everything is like so new and you can basically become an expert. The, the, the beauty of this, what we, the moment that we're living in right now, I was actually turned to this girlfriend I was telling this with my girlfriend last night is like we're in this really uh interesting time and space where things are so new yeah like if you spend enough time you can become an expert on it uh because nobody else is and and i think that's beautiful and i think you know more people should take advantage of that i mean yeah it takes like you know 10 years to become an expert in mathematics but llms and gen ai it's like all evolving so rapidly so as long as you're like every week testing the new AI tools, paying attention to what's going on, you know, using all the uh, LLMs, you can be on the cutting edge relatively easily compared to other fields. 1000%. And and, and it's funny because like, you know, I, I always also call them tools like all the time. Yeah. And and now I'm getting to a point where like, like when they start to think and reasoning, it's kind of hard to call them tools. You know, it's like <laughs> you start you start to get a little more like, damn, like, I, I always call him an I tool. Should I call something else? Like we really live in the future. I, I'm so happy and, and excited about what's about to come. And uh, we're so blessed that we have a PhD in our pocket and nobody's freaking out about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. crazy. Again, I, I definitely want to make like a full dedicated video on EverArt because I'm telling you, this is going to, people are going to be excited about this because one of the biggest issues is the lack of UI, right? Like people are still afraid to use like, replicate or whatever to train the models because it, it seems even there is a form it still seems technical but with ever art is just like a nice ui so simple to use so i think you know this will be super popular super easy and yeah exactly and, and like uh we actually have a lot of people that, that like use it for like um nfts and, and and personalized images and styles we're just about to hit under k a month revenue which is kind of crazy nice but i think the potential is much higher like again every company will need this every company with a physical product will need their own custom yeah. lora custom model and man, i appreciate cool man i thought this one yes yeah again like we need to do it like every two months man yeah <laughs> yeah super down the best way to prepare for agi is to surround yourself with the smartest people at the cutting edge of ai which is exactly what you'll find in the new society plus if you join before the end of the month you'll get a personalized analysis of your career and job 
whether AI will replace it and how you can upskill yourself. So if you're serious about AI, make sure to join. It's the first link in the description.